Hey everybody and welcome. So here I haven't posted a video about my Hyper E drive for a long while. And I know everybody's been wondering how has it held up from the amount of abuse that I've put into this thing by putting it up to 100 pounds in weight with a 36 volt 30 aw battery in literally the back bag. It's actually held up well. Um, the only thing I had to get a, a little fixed, um, it's not a fix, it's more just retune, is back tire because this started to get, uh, I've never had this retrude since I bought it, so it was just bare stock with the whatever came, how pre-fixed with the spokes, and I ran it, and a couple um, weeks ago, it was very loose, so send it to a bike shop and that's the only thing that's actually ever been to a bike shop for this entire bike has been the rear tire. And that's it. And this is a new rear tire. This is not the stock. That's the stock back there. Although that got a, lot, uh, a little bit loose. So I just unloosened this and got that refixed. And it's back to normal. So that's the only two things that's ever been to a bike shop. This entire thing has been built by me. Um, and tuned by me. So, yes, again, this is about a hundred pounds with the battery pack that I have up here. This is a big battery pack right here. <clears throat> um, without the battery pack and with all the extra stuff I have on here, like the cargo bags, that this cargo bag, and some tools. It's about 75 to about 80 pounds. The battery itself weighs about 21 pounds. So yes, this is literally, right now, with just one hub mower, is about 100 pounds. Just the bike itself. Yes. I know everybody's probably like blowing their heads like, Whoa! That's heavy! <laughs> yes, it's heavy. But it's actually been working very well, and it's... Very nice. It's a hardtail, as you can see, and it's still packing awesome. Now, off-road, I have experienced, since I do have the battery pack up here, it does lift the center of weight quite much. So the grip on the rear wheel is not very great on off-roading. But if I take the battery off and I just go off-roading like this, using an internal battery with a smaller charge control that's actually on this side right now. Um, have it pre-wired for that because I want to take it off for a little bit. Um, it's actually not that bad. Although it does lean to the forwards a bit more because I do have the mower in the front right there. And that means I take off some weight in the back. So it does kind of lean the weight slightly more towards the front. But when I have the big battery in the front, I mean the back, I do need to find some way to counter more weight into the front to make it stable because I am having a 21 pound battery in the back right here. It literally is heavy. Plus I have some other tools like bike locks and uh, stuff in the back there. Um, so yeah, I need to figure out how to put a little bit more extra weight in the front to counteract that back weight. And if you're still wondering, yes, I am still trying to figure out um, mid-drive ability. But mid-drives cost around like 500 bucks, so they're quite pricey to buy right now. And I also do need to get... Um, I've been swiping back and forth on trying to figure out uh, either going with uh, the through axle, I mean the hollow tech system like this, or just using the um, integrated system. The integrated system does have a much more um, smoother bearing system than the hollow tech system does. Um, it's not as smooth um, going as the integrated system does, but you do have less flex inside the frame when you have the Holotech because it's more out and it squeezes the middle much more better. Um, but 
I'm still deciding what to do. And if you're wondering why there is no cap right here or preload, that's because I lost cap. <laughs> so it's kind of just shoved in there as tight as I can get and then I pre uh, I just locked the nuts down. And then I got some cheap um, benzo magnesium, supposedly they're magnesium, but I think they're aluminum. Um, pedals here, they don't have that much of great uh, spin, but they are very tough, so that's fine. I just need some durable uh, system. Um, and if you're wondering, oh, they're all kickstand. I'm still trying to figure out a decent kickstand for the middle because my uh, Yukon Trail that I had finally decided to take a little um, break and it broke in twos. Um, that's why I've been trying to find um, a decent kickstand for the, my rear tire because it's a quick release. Um, I wanted to find a kickstand that would be very reliable um, but also work with a quick release system and get a kickstand for here. I can't get an on-frame kickstand. As you can see, this is actually slanted. So I can't bolt a kickstand to this because it just won't fit. And I can't bolt it back here because when I put a disc down here, it's gonna interfere with that area. So, and yes, if you're wondering, yes, I'm gonna be putting dual kickstands here and here because again, this is this bike right now with the battery pack in inside of it. Without the battery pack, it's about 75 to 80 pounds. With the battery pack, it's about 100 pounds. So you have 100 pounds leaning to the left side, and that's like, whew, very heavy. And if you're wondering, I did some other upgrades. Um, I don't know if I made a video about this, but here are my trigger signals. Doot, 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 doot. They last about 10 seconds on, and they shut down. I got them both sides, and then this is my micro shift. It's an eight speed, but this micro shift is also compatible with nine speed uh, cassettes, and it comes with the um, derailleur lockdown, which means that you can have it where it doesn't go like that. Still using V brakes, as everybody's been like, "Oh my gosh, go switch to the disc brakes." These have been lasting and had held up well and I've really enjoyed the V-brakes because they are super quiet and super efficient. And again, like I said, pros and cons, both sides, but the V-brakes have been well. I just need to do a little bit more tuning um, and straighten these um, because again, this tire is now straightened correctly and I do need to replace these pads. They're slightly worn, but um, I think I can replace them with better uh, fresh ones. I am using Pro Max 3 1 brake pads, so they have three different brake uh, enabled systems. And again, for a 100 pound bike, this locks up the rear wheel, just the V brakes, because I am using the Dorian, the Dorian uh, couplers instead of the stock couplers. I still have the stock couplers in the front and they have been efficient for now, but I plan to upgrade those. And yeah, my cable system is still a little funky, but uh, pretty much got somewhat uh, my cable rallying around. I like to do this like under the bottom tubing down here. It works to hide the cables, um, not, uh, not be so much everywhere. And yeah, I still have the battery in here. And that's the 7.8 uh, battery. I can have that for backup because again, this is uh, still full on 36 volts so I can swipe between batteries. So right now I don't have the big battery in here. I just have it to rain off this because um, I'm gonna try this soft road a bit for a while and see how well it goes. But again, I still want to get a lot of lights on this sucker. A couple, two more of these. Probably put uh, a light here. And then um, I have some BV lights. 
uh, a BV light right here that I sometimes have it. But I might be switching this to um, some just normal ambient uh, lights right in the front. And then probably up here I'll put some uh, other kind of lights right there. But in total, this front should have about over 10 lights in the front, and this should have about, I think, uh, four or five in the front, uh, the back. And then I'm going to have helmet lights back and front. These are just basic uh, bell lights. They take two double A's, and they have been working well. I have one there, and one right there. I probably will get another one to put right there because these suckers actually last quite a while and they're not that bright, but they do their job. So, and then I need my brake lights indicator right here, or I'll probably put it up here. I don't know. I'll probably put it right here. Um, that way, when I brake, um, I'm gonna get a mechan I'm using a mechanical system. I still have to rewire everything, but. Um, it allows me to, uh, when I brake, it will pull on the coupler wires right here and it will do a mechanical push button and that will indicate my rear light is actually active and people will be able to see that I'm braking. It's not going to be the digital switch ones, they are wireless because those are actually only designed to be used on the seat pad area. So if you have a rack system and you try and put it in the back, right, right here with the bag or something, or maybe, I don't know, you can probably put it in the front on top of this, and it probably work, who knows. But if you put it down here, or anywhere farther than the seat post, and it's up here where you normally would function your um, controls, it's not going to work. It'll just be like, you'll think it's working, then find out that it's not, and it's like, somebody will probably crash into you thinking that you didn't stop, because you didn't. Well, you did stop, but you didn't indicate that you were stopping, or turning, or just like that. And it's also a turn signal system too, so when I have turn signals like this, it'll also show that I'm turning. Although I have to do two different turn signals at the same time for the input. But yeah, and these also show in the front, as you can see. And they turn off automatically. And another person was, um, I did a video talking about this, but uh, some people were asking how to turn this on and turn it off. You just hold it down for a bit, turns on, turns off. I mean, no biggie. Another thing I did forget to mention for a while um, that I've been wanting to mention um, is that. This battery will leak power if you have it plugged into a charge control. So stock, if you get this stock and you have it turned off, but you have it plugged into the frame like this, it will leak power into the charge controller. It's not going to leak enough power to actually power the entire charge controller. I mean, not the charge controller, the controller itself for driving the wheel, but it'll leak enough power that over I would say a week or two weeks or so that it will you know that bar will be lost so if you don't want that to happen just unclip it and just let it hang out of the frame you don't need to take the complete battery out you just just let it unlock and just let it sit like that that way it's not touching the contacts onto the integrated battery system right here um, and that will make it so there's no power leakage from out of the cell into the controller system driving the motor and then when you are ready to ride just snap in hold it down go and power off and again like I said when you go for updating the charge uh, the controller system built into the bike you will have to use a bag either you can use a bag like this that plugs into the front or a little side panel system like this 
or get yourself a bag that sits behind here if you're not using your rack or put in a fairing pack side drill a little small hole for the wires and then wire like that something um, because you won't be able to fit it inside the hollow piece in the frame up here because this is this is where I can't get this right as you can see there's two holes right here this is where the controller sits inside the frame so this entire frame piece right in the front is actually hollow so that's where the stock speed controller fits into and then you got the cable routing that is literally underneath right here <clears throat> and that's why you can see my power cables for the stock battery is actually coming out of this whole area because that is where the motor control wire actually comes from and it actually sits I think it's on the other side yeah it's on where is it it's right there so this is where the motor controller wire goes into for the hub but if you don't have a stock hub in the uh, back and you have it only on the front then you're gonna have to wire it through a different system or so forth but either way when you remove that speed controller then you're gonna have to cut the cables because the cables actually come with stock banana cables aka the silver white ones they are pretty crappy so you're gonna have to cut those solder with new cables I'm just using the generic uh, standard ones you can get nowadays for most electric components is the uh, X XS XC um, 60s and these do fine I mean you can probably get better ones like Traxxas or um, EC3s or whatever they're called nowadays um, but these work pretty fine but I have uh, for my charging controller uh, charger for this big battery I'm using this plug that came stock with it and I soldered a Traxxas cable to it and then the end point for that these already came pre-soldered built I just had to cut the wire and use these cool little uh, um, like rubber cables that have solder built in and all you have to do is just flame these up and they solder themselves together so it's a little tricky but yeah it's actually pretty nice and they actually do hold up very nicely um, they're water sealed because they have two rubber gaskets on the back and front and then this basically seals up the solder inside once it's heated and um, if you're wondering I know a lot of people are probably going okay you have a 21 pound battery in here how do you put it in this bag so I do have foam that I bought I just bought some generic foams that you can buy for like car bumps like if you have a garage um, normally you would have something to uh, stop you from binging your bumper into the wall well these are basically that these are anti-car bumper um, impacts to walls in your garage I just bought these and I just put this inside the bag but this bag I also noticed that uh, since it's a quick release that it also would fly off when I went over a huge bump so I did something better I got some little uh, tie down straps and I don't think you can see right here where's the zipper the zipper is over here I got some um, velcro straps and I actually put them under the plastic bit right here and I velcroed the entire bag down onto the frame. Let me zip that back up. So you can't see but I could probably get this. So there's the velcro 
straps. I have two of them down. I had to cut the plastic a bit to actually open it up on the way bottom. But you can probably see that. Let me see if I can turn my light on. There you go. But you can see the Velcro strap. And I know it's not in focus. There we go. I'll try and lock that. So. Okay, so that's not gonna work. Anyways, there's little holes here and there on the back side, and that holds it down so when it goes over harsh bumps, this actually doesn't fly up. And this is solid plastic. Well, yeah, pretty solid plastic. So it holds up well. I went off by a lot of uh, curves and did some jumps. Well, not heavy jumps, but, you know, curve, like curve jumps off and um, taking lots of rock beatings and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, it's held up well. So I have foam on the bottom, and then on this that's sitting right here, there's actually foam that I put on the top once this is in. And then the wires come out right here, and boom. And then I just have this one tool here for the front tire if I need to use some uh, other stuff and then I have these small little hand pump here although I plan to get an electric pump that way I don't have to <laughs> but that pump this pump is actually awesome um, I don't think you can find this pump anymore but um, you can find this pump under uh, another name called uh, Top Peak, I believe. Um, but this is the company, it's actually pretty decent, is BV. And they have um, it like this. And it's got a floor um, handle thing. So you just put this on the floor. And you take this off. Put that at your tire. And there you go. That's about 12 inches long. So if I wanted to, um, which I'm still trying to figure out where to put this, you could put it right here if you wanted to, on the side of the edge of the bike, or right there if you wanted to, or even like on the bike, bike side like that. Right now, I just have it on a bag. That's pretty good. And then, of course, always have inner tubes with you. <laughs> I got 26 inch, inch inner tubes. Um, they're both slimed, but uh, always good to carry inner tubes with you. Um, I would carry just the basic ones, but uh, supposedly, I do have. It in the back but on the front I have a super thick slime inner tube that's actually held up 